I'm Alexa and my presentation for e-commerce is going to be focusing on e-grocery and food services. This presentation will include information about e-grocery and why it's important. It will also go over the history of e-grocery and show a little bit of a timeline which will be followed by an analysis of net margins of e-grocery compared to hybrid operations and physical supermarkets. That information will be followed by a description of what app-based ordering is and a short timeline discussing its history. So a little about e-grocery. The industry of e-grocery is composed of many online grocers, which are typically a brick and mortar supermarket, which is just a traditional supermarket that plays an online role. A grocery store that allows customers to place orders or a standalone e-commerce service that provides grocery items. Before online grocers were in this market, people knew that bringing groceries to a customer's home would be highly beneficial to the lives of the general population. With this realization, came the introduction of the hybrid model. This is the model wherein companies partner up with grocery stores to deliver food orders. Webvan launched their online grocery market in California in 1996. As their launch was successful, their goal was to operate in 26 major cities around the United States. This plan was backed by a total of $1 billion in investments, but in their final year of operation, their expenses were $525.4 million, while their sales were $178.5 million. HomeGrocer.com was also one of the first online supermarkets. The company began in Washington State. At the time, investors were throwing money at any company that had a dot-com suffix. So HomeGrocer.com quickly gained investments that allowed them to acquire a large warehouse and a number of vans. Within a decade, the company had reached over $1 million a day in sales. This inspired them to branch out and create other warehouses in California, Oregon, Texas, Georgia, and Illinois. While these companies did extremely well, others were not so fortunate. For example, grocers like Dot.com ran out of investment funds rather quickly. Even HomeGrocer.com had to sell their company to Webvan, who in turn had to file for bankruptcy in July of 2001. However, Dot.com had not been in the market as long as HomeGrocer.com. It was one of many grocers that had not proved success in their business models. The investments they received were earned solely due to hype of e-grocery and the dot-com suffix. What a lot of businesses did not realize was that supermarkets have a very low margin of sales. So having high sales still did not mean their investments in technology and infrastructure would be paid off quickly or easily. As such, continuously choosing to expand the geographical reach of an online grocer was not beneficial and proved to have a severely negative impact on finances, which was seen on the web van's balance sheets. These expansions are rather unsustainable. Another reason that the low margin of sales proved to be an issue was because online grocers did not consider that the margin of sales in stores are so low because they do not have to worry about shipping or delivering the product to the customers, and customers were not willing to pay the delivery and handling fees at their true costs. Today, technology firms and pure play online realtors are no longer crowding the online markets for these food services. Instead, it is companies like Walmart, Target, and Amazon-owned Whole Foods. I have used Amazon Grocery Delivery Service one time, but because you have to pay an extra fee per box, I didn't find it worth it to a college student like me. Having said that, I can definitely see how it would be worth it to someone who is much busier with more disposable income. Anyway, these companies have many strategic advances in place to help them deter low net margins. In Walmart's case, they have many physical stores that will provide them with high net margin to combat the low net margin that comes with being an online grocer. As for Amazon, 
The price of Amazon Prime allows them to deal with this. To compare the difference in net margins, I've listed the average percentage of net margins for the US groceries using the three previously described models. Physical supermarkets gain the most profit with a net margin of 2.1%. The hybrid operation has the second highest net margin, but is barely staying positive with a net margin of 0.2%. The online grocers, however, are doing far worse with a net margin of negative 3.4%. So now let's move into app-based ordering and what it is. So app-based ordering is a method that is changing the food service game. It is an innovative way to attract customers by offering a way for them to purchase food that will arrive at their doorstep. The timeline of mobile ordering begins in 2001 with the first well-known company entering the field in 2004. This company is known as Grubhub, which is still used today by many, including myself. I've had this application on my phone for years, ever since my brother told me about it. By the late 2000s, mobile applications were created by major pizza chains, like Pizza Hut. The introduction of this method consumed an average of 20-30% to 30 of the pizza chain's business orders. Within the 2011-2015 to 2015 period, food delivery services gained more attention. Businesses like Caviar and Instacart arose. Caviar is a company that is still in business in areas like Philadelphia and San Diego. Similar to Uber Eats, Caviar delivers food from restaurants and now displays real-time GPS tracking. Instacart still exists as well. However, Instacart does not deliver from restaurants. They actually deliver from grocery stores in the United States and Canada and provide same-day delivery. In 2016, many online food ordering and delivery services shut down. Services related to food preparation took some of the hardest hits during this year. Some of the services that were shut down are Spoon Rocket, Din, and Bento. Fortunately, 2017 had served as a turning point for the industry, as sales have been rising since then. Two large companies for this year, DoorDash and Eat24, both turned to robot delivery companies for help. Partnering with Starship Technologies and Marble provided what some see as a necessary component of a sustainable and defensible business model for online food delivery. With 2018 came a big milestone for the mobile ordering market. It reached 35 billion USD dollars globally. And lastly, this year 2019 has been a very successful and growth inducing year for the industry in China. Home food delivery is occurring much more frequently than expected with some of the services being previously covered in our e-commerce class. Some technology that is expected to advance in the e-grocery market in 2019 are robot deliveries, checkout free shopping, grocers embracing AR, voice activated experiences, and unattended deliveries. While shoppers saved a lot of time and energy by purchasing groceries online, it still isn't the quickest method of shopping. A supermarket in the United Kingdom called Ocado is expecting robot deliveries to solve this issue. The automated system is wired to pick and pack the customer's groceries by recognizing products, determining the best grasp, and packing them carefully into a box. This decreases picking and packing time from 2 hours and 50 minutes to 5 minutes. Similarly, checkout free shopping makes shopping quicker, but only for in-store customers. It completely eliminates the existence of checkout lanes. Another grocer in the United Kingdom is working on this. The store is called Sansbury's. By allowing customers to scan their products using Sansbury's Smart Shop app, purchases can be made using Apple Pay. Fresh Amazon also intends to open a chain of supermarkets in the United States that will use this method of payment. In regards to this method, I am curious as to whether it is more or less secure than self-checkout lanes. With the responsibility solely in the customer's hands and no one there to watch them to complete the purchase, how will this affect the integrity of the shoppers? On the other hand, 
Perhaps this new payment method is synced with an online database that corresponds with the alarms that are found at all store exits. Either outcome changes the odds and loss of revenue due to stealing magnificently. Another way that grocers may use technology to benefit in-store shoppers would be to integrate an augmented reality experience. A tech startup is looking to put this into motion. With the use of a new smartphone tool, Dent Reality is helping shoppers view nutritional and pricing information in AR by holding their phone camera over a product, which is something that many people who are following a stricter diet will find appealing. For example, I know that when someone is on a keto diet, they are taking a close look at the net carbs in every product that they buy to consume. This tool can help simplify that process. In the future, this same technology could be used to aid customers with store navigation. In addition to AR, supermarkets want to use voice-activated experiences to guide shoppers. Since almost half of the households in the United Kingdom are predicted to own a smart speaker by 2022, Marketing opportunities are arising. Grocers see this as a chance to publish recipes that promote their products in a way that offers a hands-free experience. To revert back to discussing improved deliveries, let me mention unattended deliveries. In order to free customers from waiting for delivery drivers to show up with their food, a supermarket that goes by the name Waitrose has produced an in-home delivery service. This service is already in use in the United States. A smart lock that is used to access the customer's fridge has temporary access codes. When a driver reaches the customer's property, he or she receives a code that allows him or her to put the frozen or perishable foods into the fridge or freezer without the customer needing to be home. The code then immediately expires when the driver completes the delivery and leaves the property. Personally, I don't know if I would use this method of delivery because the idea of giving a stranger unattended access to my property seems a little alarming and discomforting, but a lot of users may really like this function. Since 2012, sales in online grocery shopping have been more than tripled. With a baseline of 6 billion USD in 2012, it has increased to 6.9 billion in 2013. In 2014, this turned into 10.1 billion, then 12 billion in 2016. The growth continued until it reached 22 billion this year. These yearly records act as a baseline for the projections of sales for 2020 and 2021. The estimated values are 26 billion for 2020 and 29.7 billion for 2021 as the industry is expected to continue growing due to the expansion of technology that is being created for the field, some of which was mentioned in the previous slide. That concludes my talk on e-grocery and mobile food ordering. Thank you for listening. This is my work cited.